Okay, we're back live inside theCUBE. Uh, this is SiliconANGLE.TV's ex exclusive coverage of EMC World 2012. Uh, we're here on the ground with the independent coverage. Uh, EMC.TV has their coverage. Obviously that's pretty biased, it's EMC's TV, but we're SiliconANGLE, we, uh, we are uh, unfiltered, unbiased, we're independent. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE.com in Palo Alto, California. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm, I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Scott Davis, who's the CTO at VMware in the end user computing group. Uh, Scott, welcome to theCUBE. Hey, glad to be here. And John, you know, you and I have talked a lot about the whole virtual desktop and that terminology, and I go back to a couple of uh, VM worlds ago, and we were trying to stamp desktop out of the terminology, try to you know, get the industry to think more mobile, and, and I, think, I think we had an impact. <laughs> you know? I think we changed the marketplace <laughs> again. But we've always said, Dave, that VDI was kind of like a half-pregnant solution. You know, didn't know really what it wanted to be, but ultimately we were always erring on the side of the edge of the network really needs to be secure, it needs to be dynamic and robust and take advantage of the applications that are in the cloud and obviously with big data behind it. So um, to me, I think that's still the case. Um, in fact, yesterday in San Francisco, I actually ran into uh, old friend Simon Crosby, ex-Cube alumni, who's doing Bromium, which is a edge-based security, kind of virtualization edge. So, so to me, I'm really big on this whole using virtualization in tandem at the edge to create a better user experience. So, so again, that's great messaging how that renders into actual product. Love to hear uh, what's up, what the updates are. Mm -hmm. and so we're building a collection of technologies. Things are far beyond just desktop virtualization now. Uh, so let me start by saying that uh, our vision for the future is to be the uh, post-PC era management platform. And that means instead of managing end user devices, you want to be managing users, their applications, and their data, and delivering them to endpoints of all types. We're in this post-PC era, people are using multiple devices throughout the day, and basically they just want their stuff on their devices. Except IT still has to deliver these capabilities with business SLAs, compliance, uh, security, and high availability. Uh, so, so you will see all of our technologies fitting into that. So now, we're building a suite of technologies, a set of technologies, if you will. Let me talk about three kind of prongs of innovation. So one of them is about Windows. And in this world, you know, Windows applications are clearly receding. Over time, I believe Windows is going to turn into a runtime environment for legacy Windows applications. We'll think about Windows not so much as a desktop, we'll think about it like we think about Flash today. It's a container or runtime for applications. And yesterday, we announced a acquisition that's very strategic for us. We purchased a company called Winova. So what Winova does is they have two core technologies. They do image layering, meaning they can break a physical or virtual system up into a collection of independently managed layers and replicate them in the data center. Secondly, it has a WAN delivery model with sophisticated storage and network dedupe that delivers these, this image that you can manage, recompose, et cetera, to physical endpoints or to VMs with view or to endpoints running Fusion. So for example, you can run a managed Windows image on a Mac or even to a lockdown Linux instance. So this is going to dramatically broaden the benefits that you can get for desktop virtualization to far more markets. So it's centralized, ac centralized image management, but coupled with local execution, where VIEW, or VDI, was always about centralized image management with remote execution, okay, meaning that, uh, and, you know, delivering images to non-Windows platforms with remote graphics like tablets and thin clients, that's cer certainly the purview of view. But when you put these two technologies together, we cover a much broader swath of the market. So explain that again to me. The, so the edge is uh, non-remote access on the, the new, the new what one? What Winova Central? enables you to do is it splits an image up and then replicates it to an endpoint. So we're actually executing on the edge of the network. We're going to execute centrally managed Im Windows images on either physical PCs with native experience or in VMs on thick client endpoints. That lets you handle cases where your network's not good enough for remote access or you need to take it with you, disconnected access on laptops. So it brings the benefits that we've had for a while with VIEW and delivers them to many more So increased cases. performance and lowers some of the bottlenecks around the execution of it. That's what you're saying, right? Excuse me? So you're saying that the, the, the new upgrade with the new product is that it uh, removes some of the bottlenecks around the execution at the, at the network level, right? 
Well, it's it's you're running in the you're running on the endpoints. You're getting a native experience on the endpoint instead of running in the data center, and you have centralized image management for both. So you get a lot of the operational benefits that are commonly associated with view and virtual mm -hmm. desktops, except you can now apply them to use cases where that wasn't appropriate before. So these two are highly complementary. So the big conversations that are more high level stay with the strategy for a minute because this is a good, good uh, backdrop uh, data. Where does the data sit in the application? Because uh, we're seeing uh, some, you can't just in virtual machines spin down data. You got mm -hmm. data just moving around as well. So what's the data model in this? So we have a couple of different technologies around this. So the view and Windows as a service, Windows as a runtime, that's one of three prongs of our end user computing strategy. Let me talk about the other two prongs okay, to answer great. your question. Good. I'm going to get to data in a moment. Okay, okay. okay. So I can't wait. So, the middle prong is about delivering apps of all form as a service. This is our Horizon platform, and there's a collection of technologies here. This is about provisioning users and their applications and delivering it from a common portal with enterprise grade uh, single sign-on login protection of your accounts, identity federation as a service, and centralized policy and delivery of apps of all forms. Okay, so, and we made a major announcement about Horizon uh, a few weeks ago at the beginning of the month where we announced for the first time Horizon App Manager is going to be available on-prem, okay? There's another Horizon solution. Horizon is becoming a brand name that we're using for this collection of technologies mm -hmm. where we deliver uh, mobile management for smartphones, in particular initially for Android devices. We have a offering called uh, Horizon Mobile Manager that essentially is virtualization for Android. You can run two virtual phones on a physical phone. One of the phones is for personal use, you do whatever you want in it. The other phone is, uh, is a managed work phone, and IT can remote wipe and control what applications you can run in the work phone. This is very different than other vendors doing uh, traditional MDM or mobile device management. I like to say that uh, nice. they claim that they're doing bring your own device, okay, but they're not really doing bring your own device. They're doing outsource the cost of the device to the employee, but still have IT managing it. We're really embracing bring your own device. This is really it's letting people- It's creating an image using virtualization on your phones, like two phones. Yeah. Like the bat phone for the home front and then the, yeah. the work phone. Exactly. So we, we had a CIO on yesterday and he said that his organization, within his organization, mobile is opt out. Yeah. And uh, I, I, that's rare in terms of the CI organizations that I talk to. Mm -hmm. what, are you, what are you seeing there? Well, what do you mean by opt out? Basically, if you don't want mobile to mm -hmm. be part of your IT set of services, you have to opt out of mobile. They're including that you know, as a fundamental part of the IT services portfolio. Okay, I'm not sure I understand what you mean by that or what he means by so that. So you get a new employee, Yeah. Okay, and they've got a whole set of services mm -hmm. and sets of applications. They get a desktop. Mm -hmm. right, they get a mobile device, that is included okay. as part of their whole package. Yeah. And if you don't want that, you have to opt out of it. Okay. As well, opposed to what you said before, which is bring, outsource the cost of, of the mobile to the employees. Well, more and more what we see is employees want to bring the latest and greatest device they like into work and use it in work. So what we think CIOs need and what we are doing with our Horizon Mobile Management Platform is we need to give IT the facilities to really manage the business applications on the smartphone with the right security and isolation and let employees run what they want. I mean, let's face it, new mobile devices come out all the time. People want to run what they want to run. They don't want to be dictated by IT what they need to run. And basically, bring your own device, to quote my esteemed colleague uh, Vittorio Viarengo, is about being able to use, utilize uh, the device that makes you look youngest. <laughs> He's been on the, we, we like that he was good on the Cube at VMworld. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, so now there's one more aspect to our, uh, to our uh, portfolio here, which is Project Octopus. And we talked about that in our launch as well. Okay, in uh, Project Octopus is enterprise file sync with rich sharing. And the key difference is, is that your data is stored on-prem, safely and securely, instead of out in the cloud. I mean, everybody knows about consumer services like Dropbox, people use it, uh, because it's an easier way to work. It's an easier way to collaborate and share data. Uh, the days of emailing files around are, uh, are getting less and less. So, 
We've built this platform called Octopus. It's in beta right now, which is what we announced uh, a few weeks ago at our major launch. So it's an active beta with multiple customers. And what it gives you is, is essentially my documents in the cloud which, with rich, sophisticated sharing, access control lists on files and folders, except the data is stored safely and securely behind the firewall in the So how's that relate to uh, Syncplicity, the announcement EMC made, did you see that? I did see the announcement, and I'm not quite sure what uh, EMC is planning to do with that synchronicity. I mean, this is a rich area for, there's a, a lot of solutions out there. Uh, when I present to customers all the time, they're dying for the value prop that we have with Octopus. Mm -hmm. The ability to deliver the end user experience like you get with uh, web-based file services, but security and compliance, uh, rich access control list and sharing, and most importantly, the data is behind the firewall, mm -hmm. so you're not risking the assets going out of the company. Well, and Scott, we have, to get the, we have to get going because we're getting the hook here, so I know that we want to do more follow-up with you on this. I think uh, Dave and I want to track this section of the, of the, of the stack. It's okay. been something that we want to do more on, especially with your announcement of um, the, the Cloud Foundry uh, relation with the startup here. Uh, what, uh, Dave, uh, what was it in Boston? Kin Kinvey? Convey. Convey. Yeah. Okay. So you guys have a lot of good technology coming together mm -hmm. um, and we want to we want to do more with it. So uh, sorry to cut you off, but we have to get going for our next guest uh, coming in. We'll be right back with our next guest from, uh, from Brocade. I have this message. <laughs>